friends and welcome back to my kitchen. So it is a cold January afternoon here and I decided that we are going to be doing some canning today. I have some pinto beans that I wanted to get into some cans so I can get those into my pantry so that I can use at any time. So come along with me while I get that going. All right friends, so I have my All American 925 canner over here and I have that heating up on the stove. I'm going to be using the directions from the Ball Blue Book and this has all the instructions that I need for doing beans. So if you did want to get this, it's uh, again the All American uh, Ball Blue Book and it's on page 111 in this book. All right friends, so I did do two methods of soaking my beans. I put this one overnight, and that was about eight cups of pinto beans, dried pinto beans that I put in here, covered it fully with about two inches of headspace with water, and let that sit overnight. Then this morning, I went ahead and did eight more cups of pinto beans in this bucket, and I filled it with water, put it on the stove, let it come to a boil, turned it off, put a lid over it, and let it soak for one hour. So both these beans are soft, not cooked, but they are soft and now they are ready to go into the jars to be processed in the canner. All right friends, so my All American can uh, hold 18 pint sized jars. So I went ahead and had these washed and they are now all ready to go and I'm gonna fill them with my beans. I'm not gonna fill them with the water that's in here, I have a slotted spoon that I'm gonna use to go ahead and fill them and leave one inch headspace in the jars. And then I will go back and I will fill those jars with hot, fresh water that's on the stove. filled so I'm gonna go ahead and add one teaspoon of canning salt to each of my jars you do not have to add salt I choose to because I like the flavor and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill it with hot water Once you have your jars filled with water, you're going to take a little tool like the one I have here and you're just going to make sure all the bubbles are out and that the beans and the water have completely settled. Then you're going to take the opposite end and make sure that you have a one inch headspace. If you have more than a one inch headspace, then you need to add water. If you have less, you're going to go ahead and remove. As you can see with this one, I have exactly a one inch headspace. With this one, I've got more. So I need to go ahead and remove some water out of this one, but this one is just fine. Once you are done, you're gonna take a damp towel and you're gonna wipe the rims. And this is just to get any salt or any of the bean off of the rim. Then you're gonna go ahead and take a clean lid Place it on the top and put your ring on finger tight. Do not sit there and make it too, too tight. You just want it finger tight. Once that's done, you can go ahead and place it into your counter. Alright friends, so in my canner I have two and a half inches of water. To this I'm going to add some white vinegar and you're just going to do a splash. And what that is going to do, it's going to help keep your cans clean. When you take them out, you won't have this uh, white film on the top of your lids. They'll look nice and pretty. So you want to make sure you do put in a little bit of white vinegar. Then to that, you want to make sure you add your bottom part. The water is hot, so don't be sticking your fingers in there. 
like I almost did. You want to make sure you do not ever put your cans on the bottom by itself without the rack first or else your cans will break. Now that the first layer is on, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in my cans. Because my canner can handle 18 jars, I'm going to go ahead and place the second rack on top of these. And then I'm going to add my remaining jars on top of here. All right, friends, now that my jars are in here, I'm gonna go ahead and place the lid on top. And secure them into place. And then you're gonna to wanna to go at opposite sides. So this side, with this side, and then tighten it. And then do the same thing over on this side, with this side, and then tighten it down until they're all nice and tight. Once you have done this, you're gonna go ahead and place the heat on a medium high to a high heat. Once that steam has vented for 10 minutes, you're gonna go ahead and get your weight and you're gonna place it on the top. For me, I'm gonna be placing it at 15 pounds of pressure because I'm above a thousand feet above sea level over here in Kentucky. So I will see y'all back once this starts going and I'll show you exactly what to do next. All right, friends, so it has been venting now for 10 minutes, as you can see and you can hear it, it's doing a nice vent. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my weight, 15 pounds of pressure because I'm above a thousand feet above sea level. If you're below, you're gonna put 10 pounds of pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 15 right over the top, just like that. All right, friends, so as this starts to rise, you're gonna see that it has five, 10, 15, 20 pounds of pressure on here. Once it hits 15 pounds of pressure, you wanna maintain that heat. So you're gonna be sitting here babysitting this for the next hour and 15 minutes for my pint size jars. If you are doing quart size jars, you're gonna do an hour and 30 minutes. Once it hits 15 pounds of pressure, on this dial, I'm gonna lower my heat slightly so that it maintains. If it drops below that, you have to start all over again because you have to do a consistent hour and 15 minutes of it being at 15 pounds of pressure. Now we're gonna slowly take them out and we're gonna place them on the counter. When you take them out, do not turn them. Take them out just like this and then take them straight to the counter. All right, friends, so our jars are now all out and I'm gonna let them sit here overnight to completely cool and we wanna be listening for that popping sound. That means that they are sealing. Tomorrow we'll come back, we will clean the jars, remove the rings, and ensure that they fully sealed. If they did not seal, then we'll have to go ahead and do this again to make sure they fully seal, or you can put them in the refrigerator at that point and then use them within the next uh, three to five days. But I will see you all tomorrow morning and we will check the jars and see how they did. Good morning friends, it is the next morning. These have been resting overnight. They are fully cooled down and now I can remove the rings, give these a nice wash, and then we can go ahead and store them in the pantry or in your shelves, however you want to. Just make sure that when you do store them, you don't stack them on top of each other. And the reason we are removing the, the rings is to make sure that these have fully sealed, which they have, 
you can't hear that popping noise anymore so this is fully sealed and it's ready to be sitting in the pantry if any of these were not sealed we would have to recan them or stick them in the refrigerator and use them within the next few days so i'm going to go ahead and take these off and then go ahead and give them a wash and just a little tip they make one of these ball mixes if the jars uh, are a little bit too tight and you can't get the rings off you can use this and it just makes it a little bit easier to pull them off. All right friends, now that your jars are all clean, last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna label them and date them, and then they are ready for the pantry. By my kitchen today as we can some pinto beans if this is your first time canning beans i hope you enjoyed it and had fun with it for those that haven't definitely get out there and try canning something it's definitely a lot of fun and it makes you feel good to put stuff in the pantry for your family so don't forget to like subscribe share with your friends and family as always i hope all is well and have a blessed day <laughs>